evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out, and I'm going to play host and everything else this evening. Um, I want to start with explaining our venue for the day. One, we're in the cafeteria for this core, <laughs> then the media center. So that's why we're here. Two, we are in the midst of our summer where we prep for the com some, uh, coming school year. And this is our staging area for pickup. So as we purge and clean out the school from items that we don't need, we don't use, or that have broken over the school year, this is where we put it. And then the district, they come, and they take it all away, and we feel pounds and pounds lighter. So sorry that the background isn't as appealing, but uh, this is part of our summer, summer cleanup. So when the children come, this is less, these are less uh, things that they have to look at that we won't be using and have hands on for. Um, I'm going to just run through the handouts that's on the table here. First, if everyone can make sure that you sign in. And then we have the agenda, which we will follow. <clears throat> the school choice options with definitions. This gives you a little bit of information um, when you hear about the different schools, if it's a partial magnet or constituent district magnet schools, this just tells you what that means, the different magnet status. Um, and basically with the magnet status, it deals with the transportation issue, how much transportation the district will um, provide to students who go to that school, um, the number of seats that may be available for that school. So this is just a definition sheet um, to help you as we move along through this process. And um, like Hot Gap is a partial magnet school. So this tells you a little bit of information about what that partial magnet means. As we go through this process of uh, redesigning Frierson, we definitely need your input. So this green sheet here is a survey. Um, and we did a survey at the end of the school year. We had um, a meeting at the end of the school year. And then just hearing from parents, we uh, got a good idea of some, of, and, and then from community members, of some themes that um, if we got to that point, and we're at that point now, to where uh, the district would like for us to come up with a theme for Frierson to help support or enrich the curriculum that, that we're already doing. So this is going to give, um, this is one way that you can voice what you would like to see at Frierson, along with some other information here. And then on the back, um, there's, there's questions on the back, along with the space at the bottom, because everyone isn't a get up and talk in front of every black person. You can write down questions, comments um, here. And then what we're going to do with this information, we have a school community task force. And our next meeting is actually this Thursday. So we're having this meeting, taking this information to our school community task force meeting with uh, Dr. Brenda Nelson, who meets with Dr. McGinley. And that's how the information gets funneled through. <clears throat> Another sheet here is um, we are looking for PTA officers, uh, SIC chairperson. And I've been talking to different people um, to get more support when it comes to PTA so that we can really get things rolling here at Frierson. This is Alan here, has been our PTA president for the past two years. Ms. Alan, just raise your hand. Wait a here she is. She's waving it low. Um, but we need to get, get some new officers, some, some officers in so that we can really get things rolling. And then our School Improvement Council chair, she has served her two years and we need um, a school improvement chair as well. Um, school supply, our school supply list and welcome back letter to students went out today. Um, so those fires and parents, uh, you should be receiving it in a day or two. Um, but we just put this school supply list out there um, so that you can have it. And then we have a flyer here. Uh, each year, the Hands of Christ they do free uniforms. Um, so this is information. Frierson's Day or John's Island Walk Law Day is August the 5th at um, Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church. So
So the information is there um, for uniforms and for supplies. And then on the back, we have a couple of neat events coming up for Frierson. Our back to school block party, which we are in the planning stages uh, for August the 3rd from 10 to 3. We plan on having a good time here. Another motivator to get the um, students and community just pumped up about returning to school. And then we have our back to school pep rally. We like to do at the beginning of each school year, another motivator to uh, get students uh, pepped up. And then this long sheet here, this gives you sort of like in a caption style, uh, the different zones in Charleston County School District, the North Zone, Central, East, Southwest um, zones. Frierson, we're in the Southwest zone. And it lists the different uh, magnets, partial magnet, constituent magnets that are with the district. And a lot of this information is information that was shared during our school community task force meetings. And as we get information, we'll relay that information to you so that we're all uh, in the same room. So that's sort of like a short rundown of the information that you have. Um, I think I introduced myself to everyone as you came in on Mrs. Ross, uh, the uh, principal. And this is my second year as, I'm moving into my second year as principal, but my 10th year at Frierson, the first eight years I was the guidance counselor, so I'm privileged to be able to continue on here at Frierson. At this time, I'm going to introduce our school community task force members. I see Ms. LaBorde, who's walking in. She's one of our parents. Uh, Mrs. Allen, who represents our PTA. Uh, I saw Ms. Maxwell. She's our second parent on the school community task force. Ms. Deborah Grant. She represents our community volunteer on the school board, on the school community task force. And we have two teachers, um, our kindergarten teacher, Ms. McDaniel, um, our CD teacher, Ms. Cheatham, and we have Ms. Green, who is uh, coming, on, on, coming on board with us, uh, representing School Improvement Council. So those members, if you can just stand a minute so that the community can see the faces of our school community task force. And we'll be, our, um, the members will be meeting again Thursday, because that's our um, official school community task uh, uh, date that we'll be meeting again and just trying to hash out some things to get some things done. Um, I do not see any board or constituent board members here. Um, I did speak with uh, Mrs. Murray, our constituent board member, um, who um, fell ill. She, she, she uh, got sick on her way, coming from an appointment, trying to get here, and she called. And I told her, well, I, would, I would rather see you safe than get here, and then we have to call the ambulance. So go on home. Um, the purpose of our meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to, uh, one, to keep you informed. Frierson, um, Frierson is a small rural school. And because of that classification and with low enrollment, Frierson is, is always on the radar as, okay, how can we improve or increase the enrollment of Frierson? What can we do to help get more children to Frierson. Um, so the information that, that's on the, the agenda here is information that we discussed and came to a consensus about um, at our school community task force meeting. One, Frierson is not closing. Frierson is not closing. Um, but we do need to look at ways that we can increase and diversify our student body. So we are not closing, but we just need to come together as a community and see how we can work together to increase our enrollment to attract um, students who are not attending Frierson, either from Wapala or Johns Island or James Island. That's another purpose of this meeting is to open it up and see what can we put here at Frierson that will help attract students. Um, one of the 
ideas or things that the district wanted, wanted to do or put forth to the school community task force was the pairing of Angel Oak and Frierson. And what that would have looked like was one school being K-2, the other school being 3-5. And uh, with that, that would help increase the enrollment at Frierson. Last year, our enrollment was 162, and that included, um, had, included Head Start. Um, so we do have, have a um, small student population, but it's a family-oriented feeling. Students walk through that door and they're at home. Um, and that's one of the pluses um, at, for, you know, at being at Frierson. <coughs> but uh, when you look at schools and, and what it takes to run a school, everything from the lights to the outside maintenance to teacher salaries to, to the materials to just everything, um, it's cut down to a per pupil cost. And that's what they look at. How can we make Frierson feasible and viable and you know and keep it going. So um, that's why we're tasked with the with with uh, coming up with ideas to make that happen. <coughs> um, the pairing of Angel and Frierson from hearing from parents and community members on both sides, Angel Oak and Frierson, um, neither community wanted the pairing of the two schools. So both schools took that to the school community task force and shared that with uh, Dr. Brenda Nelson. The school community task force took a vote and voted, let's take pairing off the table. So pairing at this time is not on the table for Frierson and Angel Oak. So that leads us to going to the next step. Okay, guys? You don't want to pair the two schools? All right, coming up with the theme, um, for schools have helped schools increase enrollment. Um, so we're tasked with coming up with a theme to help enhance the curriculum, to help attract students. Like you have St. Andrews Math and Science. You have uh, Mur Murray was saying is now is this coming school year will be a Montessori school. You have hot gap partial magnet of advanced studies. So what can we add to fire sense? to sort of get the, ah, I didn't know they had that at Frierson. Ooh, they have that at Frierson? So what can we do? What things can we come up with to help enhance Frierson? The information that we get here, that we, the input that we get from you, we're gonna to take to our school community task force on Thursday. What Dr. Brenda Nelson is going to do is take that information to the county school board and to Dr. McGinley so we have to sort of follow, follow that, that guideline there. Take information from here to the school community task force. From the school community task force, it goes to um, Dr. McGinley. So with that, we have been tasked with, we had a, a six month window. Our first meeting was May 2nd. So we, is, may it seem like we've been meeting for a while, but our first meeting as the school community task force has been um, May 2nd. And for those who have been in the schools, you know, when it comes to May, the end of the school year, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's testing, there's celebrations, there's filters, there's wrapping up the school year. But we were able to have several meetings in May. We had a meeting in June when teachers are off and people are vacationing. We uh, met in June and we'll be meeting again uh, this Thursday because we're working to try to make this happen. So the end goal of our meeting um, as the school community task force and meeting with parents and community members is to come up with a proposed plan that we will submit to the county school board saying this is what the parents and community would like to see Frierson become. And this is one of the first steps of making that happen, is getting input from you. Um, any questions, concerns, write it down on the survey. Please answer the survey questions. Um, the, the themes, the four themes that are on the survey, 
Those were, they just weren't pulled out of the air or pulled out of the hat. Those were things that came from survey that went home at the end of the school year um, around May 21st. And then we had a PTA SIC meeting on May 15th. We got input from there. And then just from hearing from community members and from parents. So some of the, the, the four themes that sort of stuck out were agriculture and health sciences. And, um, and then, oh, we also heard from teachers too. Looking at, again, what resources can we have and do we have that we can make a go of it, don't have to ask the district for additional money. They are looking at and seeing that we are using our community, we're using our resources because we, we have a stake in Frierson and we know that we have to use all resources. For agriculture, we have many farms on the, on the island. Um, we're partners with Urban Vineyards, with the tea plantation, we have Cherry Point Hatchery, um, uh, Bugsby, we have a teacher who is, um, um, who lives on Bugsby Farm and, and uh, so, you know, just the different farms that we can bring in those uh, resources. And health sciences, so uh, making use of the local farms, students learning about the science, art, and business of cultivating and producing sustainable foods, health, sciencing, health sciences, partnering with local hospitals, learning about the different areas of health science, such as nutrition, wellness, and disease, health, and disease prevention. And just relating that all to those uh, core subject areas, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. And with all of these, we would be able to relate those to those core sub subject areas. Technology, we know that we are in a technology uh, world right now. Most of us in this room didn't grow up with uh, phones, you know, with the mobile phone. We had the phone in the house. The children now, they're growing up with the hand phones, and they know how to do everything with us. And we have to go to them at times, can you show me how to do this? So getting, you know, get, getting them exposed and knowledgeable about technology. Advanced studies, just taking those core subjects and making it more rigorous. Um, and, and instructional strategies um, to, to help students to continue to learn and to be interested and engaged in learning. When I, when I look at advanced studies, I think of uh, personalized learning, which Frierson um, is part of the Race to the Top grant, and that's all about personalized learning, finding those instructional strategies to help motivate and engage students. And global studies, uh, making real-world connections through foreign languages, geography, history, diverse cultures, and again, relating it to those core content areas. So those are some of the themes that came out of the parent surveys, talking to community members, and uh, talking to staff members, teachers, um, that, that sort of came out. And then there's just some additional information about the survey. So, at this time, this is, this is a sharing information meeting, sharing what information we have to you so that when you go back home um, and different places and you see parents and they may say, well, what was that meeting all about? You'll be able to tell them what the meeting was all about, that we're looking at strengthening Frierson, increasing the enrollment of Frierson, engaging the students, and diversifying Frierson more. Um, I've been doing the talking for the past 20 minutes, so uh, we do not have a cordless mic at this time, but if anyone has any questions, any questions that I cannot answer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take those questions back to the school community task force, I'm going to get those answers, and I will bring that back um, to you with an answer, because we're in the beginning stages of, of this whole process, and the school community task force, we're learning and getting answers as we go through this process. So is there anyone who has any questions, um, concerns about what we're trying to do um, here? I just, yes. So that I can understand, under A, 
those are absolutes, meaning number one, the school is not going to close. Those are those, in that list. Those are absolutes. Yes. That's right. How many? What is the number of children? First of all, what's the capacity that the school can handle? This, uh, this, I, I've, I've heard anywhere between 350 and 410. Okay. And on that note, if I can add um, that, as far as the children that are on Wapala Island, yes. I want to say that. Um, there are school age children for Wapala that may be like 186 or 92 children and um, um, committee men, uh, members. If you know, jump in any time because I'm not a one a one person uh, voice here. The last one, the last was 182. 182. So, so the numbers is 182. We have at Friars 162. So we're capturing the majority of the students on Wadmala Island. Any other questions? Yes, I'm trying to make a decision as to what to my support as far as the, um, the theme would go. What, uh, when you consider the state exams, the state testing that the students take, what's the strongest rating that Friarson gets? Math, science? Um, Friarson has, has always had to put extra emphasis on math. That was the yes. The math is the yes. Um, so we, we've always and we've we've um, just always had to put extra emphasis on math, getting those, strengthening those math school, scores. What's the strongest scores that Friarson should get? Our, our strongest um, has been those ELA and uh, social studies scores. What, what is the, I guess, does the school district have a goal that they're trying to get? Where are they trying to get you up to a level? Because, I mean, it's going to have to be, I'm just wondering, sounds like it's going to be a pretty, you're captivating your community, which yeah. is good. So what they're wanting to do is to try to find it to be as attractive as it can to get people to drive all the way from Johns Island or from there to here. Yes. That's the trouble. Yes. Okay. And, and we know that, tran that transportation at this point, we do have one Johns Island bus stop, uh, which is at uh, housing. And I would say that, you see, a bus load holds about 65 students. We have maybe about 30, between 20, 25 students who are coming from Johns Island to Wadlamaw. So, uh, Angel, so Angel O, with, does it have a, will it have a theme and then this, I know that you're not blending the two together, but I guess what I'm asking is like for our people there to say, because I, I come out to the school and I see you and I see it's a beautiful facility and I see, I mean, it's pristine. It's, it's just like you got it all together. And so for people on the island to get, I guess what y'all are trying to do is find a forte, so to speak, something that will draw them here. Yes. Will, this, are you trying to do something that will be separate than like what Angel Oak would offer or not really? We're, we're, we're trying to do something separate. Um, Angel Oak is doing the same thing that we're doing right now. Maybe not tonight, but they're holding, you know, they have been um, attending the school community task force meetings and they've been having their meetings through PTA or um, through other means. Um, so they're going through the same process. So we aren't alone. Um, it's just sort of that, that we're the flip of Angel Oak. Angel Oak is overcrowded. Okay, that was my question. Yes. That, that's one of the things I was wanting to know so that we can point people this direction. Yes. Instead of us thinking because, in, so they are maxed out at Angel Oak. Yes, they are maxed out at, at Angel Oak. And where they're over enrolled, we're under enrolled. And people are just, I didn't mean that. Go ahead. What, what the, so what I understand, because I never, geographically, uh, being on Johns Island again, I never really thought about it, but now it makes sense then that when parents and families move to the island, we can say, listen, it's a little bit of a run, but Frierson's an excellent school out of this way. Yes. Instead of people automatically thinking, well, i got to go off the island. Yes, and that brings up another point, um, is that when we're out in the community, in the grocery store, the laundromat, the gas station, we have to talk positive about fire center. Because the person who's standing next to you or who's standing in back of you, you may be that, that deciding um, 
uh, twig or point that say, you know what, I just heard that person say they have a child that goes to Parson and they don't like it. So why should I send my child there? So we have to talk positive about Farson. If, and I always um, tell you know, parents and let parents know, teachers, you know, even students know. Um, if there's something that you have a question about, something you don't like, something that you're concerned about, please come to me and talk to me about it. And I will try my best to resolve it. And if I can, I have a ton of people that I can call who can help me. But we have to start talking positive about Farson because word of mouth beats a billboard, it beats a commercial. We have to start talking positive about the good things, about the things that's going on here at Farson. Ms. Um, I know typically in other areas where this is an issue where once schools are overcrowded or they're not enough, the solution is to redraw the lines. Now, granted, this has always been because Waterman is a separate island, a separate district, and Mount Zion and Angel Oak have divided <coughs> the population on John Zion. So has it been discussed to redraw the line so that some of John Zion comes to Waterman? Rezoning has been mentioned. Um, they want us to take this approach. But if rezoning is something that, you, that the community would like to see done, we will take that back to the school community task force because that has been brought up. Um, but the district would like to see us take, take this avenue first. But if rezoning is something that the community is, is interested in, we can definitely let them know that the community is interested in rezoning. That doesn't mean we're going to stop working on our proposal because then they'll say, well, you guys just didn't submit anything. So you didn't even do what we asked you to do, but we'll just let them know that this is another suggestion from the community. Well, I can see that um, doing it the way we're doing it, you're trying to get people to volunteer to come from John Solomon, yes. Guadalupe. But if, if we can't get the numbers up and you're going to risk the school being closed, it seems to me you can take both islands, divide them by three, and have the zoning set so that it's equal to all three schools. Yeah. And, um, but well, hopefully it'll work. We get them to come voluntarily, but mm -hmm. you know the busing will have to be addressed because right. of the distance. Nobody wants to have to come this far, right. or eventually have the school closer to the corner. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always. I mean, if the money were allotted and the Waterloo School were closer to John's Island, then you would have a better chance of people on John's Island wanting to come to Friarson. Um, because you know, as you heard the numbers, we're capturing the students who are on Waterloo Island. We are just a rural school. We are a rural school um, with an enrollment that is low. We're doing great things here at Friarson. We just have that one little little flag that's hanging over us, which is our enrollment, um, that we have to try to, we have to show the district and be earnest at it, that we're making, that we're trying to, to sustain Frierson. Um, but Frierson is, is, is not closing. Um, the county school board that we have now, they are supportive of giving opportunities for schools like Frierson to come up with ways to help on sustain it. Uh, yes, sir. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry I was late. My name is Michael Miller, and I currently serve on the Charleston County School Board. So um, when Ms. Charles mentions the board, she mentions me and eight <laughs> others who serve for the students of not just prior school, but students throughout the district. Um, our goal is to hear from you. To hear from the community, the district has been, a, I think, over so many years, the district has done a very poor job of listening to the citizens, listening to the parents, and those who live in the communities about issues concerning their schools. So this is an attempt for us to hear directly from the community, directly from the neighborhood planning team, directly from school improvement councils, on what you feel is the best avenue the best theme, the best way to educate your children. Um, 
most board members have never been out this far. I'm only, I got elected on the board in November. This is my first time to Friarson. Welcome. I'm back from school session. Well, I would have been, 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 been here earlier, but there was an accident on Maybank, and because I only knew one way to get here, I just, I, I prayerfully, I prayerfully turned around and followed some people, and they, they weren't coming here, but I knew I needed to get on Maybank somewhere. But, but, um, but I think, to Ms. Ross's point, we as a board were looking at different ways to operate schools. Not every school is equal. Not every school is the same. Not every school is, are dealing with the same sets of circumstances. Rural schools are unique to Charleston County. Schools like Frierson, schools like Jane Edwards out on Edisto are very unique schools. And they're very unique to their community. So we don't want to divide, close, these schools, we need to come up with creative ways of keeping them open and attracting more students so one school is not overcrowded and another school is dealing with lack of students. Um, I think we as board members, we recognize, especially when we come out to schools, we recognize that schools serve a purpose in their area. And to close a school that's on the far end of our counties doesn't serve our students and our parents well at all. Right. So this is an attempt for us to hear directly from you guys. And trust me, we need to hear because the district oftentimes don't do what's in the best interest of students and parents. They do what's in the best interest of the district. Of the bottom line. And Ms. Ross works for the district, so she can't say what I can say. I'm a board member. I can say what I want to say. So we really need to hear from you guys. We need to know what it is you need. We need to know what your concerns are. If transportation is an issue, we need to know that. If not having enough teachers because teachers are being spread, if the faculty is not large enough, those are issues that board members need to know, not just Michael Miller. I'm only one person with one vote. In order to change anything in our district, it takes five votes to do so. So I know some other board members, I was expecting some other board members to be here tonight, unfortunately they're not. Um, so I will be making a report to my fellow colleagues when we meet again, but again, I can't reiterate enough that rural schools have to have a voice. They have to have a voice. And the voice of Frierson needs to be a voice that is encompassing and embracing of everyone in this community. Not just some, not just a couple, not just the ones that I like. It has to be Contrary, it has to be a diverse group of voices coming together then to make one voice. Because I'll be honest with you, as a board member, if you guys don't come up with a decision, we're going to make a decision for you. And nine times out of ten, it won't be a decision you guys are like. So I'm pleading with you to organize, to get together, to get structure, to get a function that works not only for you, but that works for your children. Because oftentimes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut up, but oftentimes when I go to meetings like this, I always hear the adults talk about, don't close the school, don't do this to the school, don't do this to the school. Well, it's not technically about the school. The school is the building. Mm -hmm. It's about what the children will learn in the building. Mm -hmm. That's the most important. Location, 40, 50 years ago, kids went to school without electricity and water. Mm -hmm. They were still educated. So I think we have to never lose sight of that, because to me, that's what's most important. It's not so much where the children are educated, but it's how they're educated. Now, I'm not saying that to say the kids ought to be bus 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour away every day. I'm not in favor of that either. All that means is we have to come up with creative ways of keeping schools like Frierson open, but also keeping schools like Frierson open to the point that they can attract children who may be leaving the island to go elsewhere to be educated because of some negative stigmas they may have heard, because they've never come to the school, because they've never met the principal or the faculty and staff, which happens all the time across the district. So, with that being said, if you guys have any questions, I'm here. Ms. Allen? Yeah, Mr. Miller, yes. um, you mentioned that the transferring in the district, mm -hmm. okay, um, we're trying to attract more students, okay, 
Johns Island with, with the community task force, they got 200 and something kids leaving the island to go to different schools. Why is the board still allowing, allowing those stuff to happen? I mean, if you got a school over here, why not say, okay, the school's open, mm -hmm. try the school first. Okay, why, why don't the board say that? Well, because unfortunately, we just don't have that ability. We can't tell parents. You can't send your children who, somewhere. Who approves the, the transfers? The transfers. We do. We approve the transfers based on availability. Only. Now, the board hasn't always done that in the past. They've done some other creative ways. But we as a board have taken the initiative. We're not going to allow any transfers in the district to schools that are overcrowded. At all. At all. But what we would like to do is ask parents to say, if you live in this area and you don't want to send your child to a school in your area, in your district, and you want to go outside your district, if there aren't any spaces available, we want to encourage parents to find a school within their attendance zone. Now, the only way to do that is to make parents feel comfortable that the schools in their area will provide the same needs as a school that they're looking to send their kids to. Now that means that parents have to do their due diligence as well. Parents have to go visit schools, meet principals, walk the halls. Most parents don't do that. Most parents hear one bad thing about one school, they say, I will never send my child to that school. They've never met the principal, they've never seen what the culture of the school is like. But as a board, we can't tell parents they can't send their kids to school. Okay, well, as a board member, my thing is that you all should, okay, let's visit the school that's in your attendance zone first before we decide that we're going to make this decision to send your child out of the attendance zone. Well, in a sense, that, that's kind of done, but not quite in that way. Mm -hmm. Parents make a, a, a request to transfer their child. That request goes to the constituent board first. The constituent board would then look at it and make a decision based on availability, so on and so forth. But they, that they, they, parents visited the school. Now that we don't know. Zone. That should be a requirement. Why don't you go and see how the school is and see what's going on at the school? Because basically all the schools have the same curriculum. This is the enhancement of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that needs to be stressed. That could be something that we could, we could see if, if, again, I'm only one mm -hmm. other key, to see if other board members would agree that part of the transfer process be that parents potentially visit schools that, they're no, that they don't consider before they could apply to attend another school. And that's something that we could, we could possibly look at. I mean, again, I think we're just trying to be um, proactive when it comes to schools in our neighborhoods. We want every neighborhood school to be a viable option for parents. There's no reason parents should have to transfer or leave their neighborhood to send their children to another school. Of course, it's, you know, parents who love their kids to go to school where they work. If they don't work on the island, it's difficult if you work, if you live on the island and you work downtown, if something happens, I mean, it becomes, a, it becomes a, a legality issue, a transportation issue. But again, I think our goal is to make sure that schools in our communities are serving our communities at a very high standard. And unfortunately, and I can say this, um, I think oftentimes a lot of schools have been neglected by the district. Yeah. And because certain schools are neglected by the district, you see low attendance. You see a high transfer rate out of certain schools. Um, and and that's, a, that's a system and a cycle that has to stop. So. What I tend to see with the district, and I've said it before, is that, especially on the islands right here, they will put all their emphasis on one school, fill up that school, while another school is left alone yeah. to fend for itself. And that shouldn't be. If you're going to enhance the school and do whatever you need to do to that school, if you're going to stand on surveys, do it for all the schools and make it straight across the board. And that's what we can do to get enrollment up at all the schools in, the, in that case, so it's not just one. So that needs to be thought about. I think that's a great formula um, when you look at um, preparing schools for the future, not just look at one school in a particular area, but look at all schools. In, do them not the same way because each school would be unique in its own right, but make sure that attention is placed on all of the schools so that you do have great schools no matter where you live in the district. I saw a couple hands, um, and we're at 715.
Um, Miss Mac. Ms. I can stay to 12. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a go until I'm told now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Audrey Mack. I am with the Friends of Princeton. It's an organization that was organized back in 2009 when the school was slated to be closed. We are still working with the school. Our purpose is to work with the district and the school to make sure that the school remains in this community for our children. Um, we were invited to the constituent school board meeting back in January and were informed of these plans for parents. And we were tasked to come back to the community, call a meeting to find out the cost to see whether or not they support this. We had a series of uh, meetings beginning in February. And I just want to touch, Ms. Ross, on some of the things that were said because they sort of piggyback on what you were saying earlier. Um, the majority of the group during those series of meetings agreed that they were not in favor of carrying the school. And we thank you all for, for not for taking that off the table. Um, there was a consensus in the group that the sixth graders be brought back to Price. Price once had sixth graders back in 2010. So they took it away. So how can they increase their enrollment when you're taking away the sixth graders? So the consensus one of them wants the district to bring the sixth graders back. That would help with the enrollment. Um, price and needs, and I talked to Mr. Miller, he's been working with us. And um, price and needs teachers that have advanced degrees and have a good track rec record of performance in the classroom. Those are some of the things we talked about. Um, the sixth year was at, at one of our meetings, and her concern was that we have a lot of teachers that are in the forgiveness program. With all the respect of teachers that are in the program, she felt like if we had maybe a mix or not so many teachers in that program, they would be willing to stay at the school instead of, you know, once their loans are paid, then they, they, they pursue other, other opportunities. Um, the majority of the group looked at some different high schools, similar to what you have on here. We pulled it off your website. And um, one of them was an international baccalaureate school, an IV school. They were very interested in that because it had six core curriculum to include math, science, reading, and so forth. Um, but they, they were looking at having an IV school where, where all of the children could attend, not the children in the neighborhood, neighborhood would have to apply. They, they were not interested in that. I don't know whether an Ivy school could be set up that way, but um, they were very interested in that because Buse Academy, you know, they have a waiting list. And it's on the other side of the county, so to speak, so to have one down here, that would attract more parents um, to bring their children here if it was an Ivy school. Um, a fine arts program came up. Um, one person said that the school does not need programs. What the school needs is teachers with advanced degrees and um, good curriculum. The other thing was a math and science program, sort of like the St. Andrews math and science program. And in that school, from what I understand, all of the children in the neighborhood is able to go to that math and science school. Children on the outside of the neighborhood apply. So that way we'll keep our children here, and if any other child would like to come into the community, they can, they can do that. Um, the other one was a language-based school. You know, Spanish is beginning to be the second language um, here in America, German or what have you. And someone else also talked about a school that has um, programs that, that help children that are uh, challenged. So, um, you know, we've been meeting, and we hope that you will come and join us with the Friends of Crisis so that we can continue to work with the school and the district. Now, there are some other things that um, that we were concerned about, and I will put it on the survey, yes. and you guys can look at it on Thursday night. Um, before we get to Ms. Middleton, um, a couple of things I, I, I want to give, give, clar give clarification to. Um, I'm not aware of teachers Last year, last year was, was my first year as on, as on principal. Last year or this year, having a high number of teachers being in the forgiveness program for um, loans. Okay. So that's, that's nothing that ever came up on my radar. Um, so we, you know, we don't have that. Well, that's um, what the council chair mentioned. Okay, that's, that's not something that I'm aware of, um, something that ever 
came up as a concern. Okay. Um, all of our classroom teachers are highly qualified teachers, which means that they are certified in their area. They meet the um, certification of South Carolina, the state of South Carolina. We do have teachers who hold uh, masters on degrees. We have teachers who are working towards uh, masters on degrees. We have um, teachers who are working towards getting their gifted and talented certification. So we have quality teachers here at Frierson. Um, when a parent has a concern about a teacher, like I mentioned earlier, I would love for that teacher to come and to talk with me about whatever their concerns are. But we have from CD to fifth grade, we have highly qualified teachers who meet the um, South Carolina standards and beyond. Our teachers are always going um, to professional development, taking courses outside of um, you know, school hours. Um, so our, our teachers, I'm, I'm proud of our teachers. Most of them, I'll say, well now, now at this point, maybe about a third of our teachers that I've been here with for the first eight years as guidance counselors, um, I would be proud to have, if I had children, um, to have my child in their um, class. Um, but as a parent, parents who are in the audience, if you ever have a concern about a teacher, please come and talk with me and we can address it from, from there. Um, all of this, um, Matt, the other specialties, themes that you came up with, please list those on the line on the survey that says, that says other. Um, and for anyone else, if you have any other ideas, please list it on the line that, that says other. Can I, can I also leave this with you? Um, yes. So the summation of what happened in those meetings. Yes. Okay. Um, programs, the children love programs. Children learn when they think they aren't learning. When we had our full-blown after-school program and fifth grade celebration or different celebrations and children get the opportunity to voice what was their best part of Frierson, they often mention the programs like the Underground Railroad or the after-school program. Um, we incorporate program, we incorporate learning in everything that we do. The thing about children, about learning, is that we make learning fun. So even when they think they're having a ball, they're learning a skill, they're getting reinforcement, something there. Um, and having programs to serve those students who may need that extra help, we, um, we have that program here at Friars. We may not, we don't, we may not have um, a self-contained classroom like some schools do, um, but we have resource services to help support those students, which all Charleston County schools have. They have uh, resources to help those students who may just need a little extra time to get there, or may have a learning disability. We give them that, 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 that support that they need to still make them feel that, own, that they are a, a, um, a successful student. Um, so those are some, just, just some clarification. Please continue, you know, write your questions, concerns, and those themes on the survey. Ms. Middleton and Ms. Seabrook. We do have a great school here, and we, there are a lot of positive things going on. Of course, you know, if, any, if there's any information that's going to be disseminated amongst folks, it's going to be negative. That's the first thing that travels really quickly. So basically, since we're competing with students, and we have so many good things going on, we have to market the school more. We have to have more good PR in the paper, more stuff going around. So when somebody hears something negative, they're like, well, I just saw on the paper, I just read this. And because it's a little bit of ways away, unless you got something good to going on, or, or inviting people to these activities, they're not going to know, they're not going to take the opportunity to come. So since, you know, everything is a business, so we have to attack that like a business to show everything that's going on at Friday and let people know, I'm not sure if it's a weekly something in the paper, we, you know, we got connections with every place, you know, we can work something out where we can, you know, spotlight Friday and, and, and talk about the good things that are going on, but it has to go to, it just can't, it has to go to the paper or some other type of public outlet because, of course, human nature, if something bad happens, that's the first thing to talk about. When I talk about the good stuff, it's going to be amongst friends and it may not, you know, but I'll talk bad about anything anywhere, so we have to do a, a major marketing campaign to bring 
folks, because we know good things are coming going on here, but it's just a small group, so we have to make it larger. Exactly. We have to talk positive about fire and anything negative. If you're out in public, just hold on to that. Don't talk about it in, in the grocery line or at the gas station. Just hold on to that. Call me up, send me an email to Ms. Ross. I have a concern. And I will I will sit and I will talk with you. Um, we we have lots of great ideas. We need lots of great minds and hands. Um, PTA is a great source to get to have these little pockets of um, committees to help get some of this, to help get this done. So think about PTA, think about uh, volunteering. If you just want to come in and, and say, okay, Ms. Ross, what's going on this week that I can write a little article about and send it to the Post and Courier or, or whatever. Um, come on in. Volunteers, PTA, we need you. Ms. Seabrook. Uh, I just want to share, I've had the privilege in my 30 years of teaching, of teaching at Angel Oak and at Mount Zion and at Frierson. And I have to share that Frierson, above all, has been my favorite. Even though I was many years at Mount Zion and only a short time at Angel Oak, Frierson has what most schools don't, and that's a low student-teacher ratio. And that's where the children grow, because they are very close to their teachers, and they get that one-on-one -on -one instruction. Now, we have to grow the school, but that is the selling point right now for Frierson, is bring your child here, they will get one-on-one -on -one instruction, they will get uh, to be built up as individuals and as young people. That's what this pro these programs she's talking about does. You put those children on the stage and they shine. Yes. And when they leave here, and I followed them all the way to Hawk Gap, I tutored most of the children I've worked with here, I'm still tutoring at Hawk Gap, and Frierson students still are shining at Hot Gap. They fit right in, they're well behaved, and that's what they learn here. You don't have misbehavior here at Frierson. It is a strong Christian-based school, and the children are being loved and cared for, and they're leaving here with a strong self-confidence. And that's what they need to take into this world. And I just think it will be a dreadful shame if we cannot keep Frierson open and somehow spread to the others that this is a great school and you need to come here. And the number one problem we've got is distance. And yeah. maybe something can be done in terms of the length of the day so the busing can be incorporated into the time so that the children are not leaving home at 7 and leaving here at 3 and getting home at 4 or 5. And so because if you're going to bring them in and they're going to be on that bus the extra time, the school day needs to be shortened. However, the instructional time has to be it's not a minute wasted. You know, you've got to make, um, do better during your instructional day to make use of the time if you're going to shorten the day. But whether that can apply, I don't know. But um, there's no doubt about it. Carson's a great school. And then I'll hush. I just you know, addressing this to it's Mr. Miller, right? Correct. Okay. I'm Pastor Greg Butler, and I've been on the islands now for 12 years. I've never heard anything but absolutely wonderful things about this school. And I know this is going to sound way off the charts, and it's going to sound crazy. But at the end of the day, if the sun sets, and the fact of the matter is, you can't get 250 people. You can't get 300 children. If we can change the life of one, mm -hmm. that's worth every bit of it. So if you look at statistics of 182, you're bringing in 162. If you're moving in and you bring six graders back or whatever, there's your growth. The other thing is, as much as none of us like to hear about it, we know at some point down the line, there's going to be people moving to this island. Mm -hmm. And so when they do move, Surely the district, Mr. Miller, surely they've got to be looking in the future, they're knowing that we are, you know, one Malaw Johns Island is about the two biggest, largest pieces of property mm -hmm. that will be some development. So I think that if you look down the line, uh, and I appreciate you for being here, so I'm not meaning it that way. I wanted to tell you, this is a, this is a hammer down good school. That's what I'm telling you. This is a very good school. And so um, that, I just wanted to say that. So if you end up, you can't get hundreds of students. It may eventually be that you end up, you know, five, six years down the road, you got another hundred students. And I think that's something you should take into consideration. 
I, I, I thank you for that because I think as a board member, oftentimes we look at schools as line items. Yeah. And you know, you know, obviously my job is is to protect the interests of every student in the district, but also to protect the taxpayers' dollars as well. So you know, some board members may feel more strongly toward protecting tax dollars, so then issues become line items. So. Ms. Ross may need five new people on her, on, her, on her staff, but because we see a line item, we cut those positions, not realizing how those students, how those students are impacted by the cuts we make. Um, I say that because we had, um, we were asked to come out to Jane Edwards um, because we were, there was talk about closing Jane Edwards and sending kids from Edistow on to Baptist Hill. So, I never been to Jane Edwards before. Again, I'd only been on the board for you know seven, six or seven months at the time. So we drove out a couple of board members. We drove out to to Jane Edwards, but I knew where Baptist Hill was because I'd been there before. So I just kind of hit my odometer as I passed the school until I got to Jane Edwards, and I was thinking, holy. Yeah, well, think about the bus. Lately. Like so, then we started talking about what time are the kids catching the bus on? <laughs> Yes. 5 o'clock, 5.15, 5.30, doing a bus an hour and a half every day, one way. Mm -hmm. So as a board, we said, there's no way we can do this. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it went from a line item mm -hmm. to personal. Mm -hmm. Because we came to the communities, to see the schools, to meet the people. That's why you got to get us out here. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not here, if we're only in our home, mm -hmm. and at 75 Calhoun Street, we don't understand the needs of the communities. We don't. We get a packet, it's about that thick. We read it, we say, oh, well, it looks like it saves more money to close the school, so let's close it. We don't take into consideration the historical relevance of a community, of that school, what that school means to that community. Right, as a hurricane huh? shelter and as a voting location. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in addition, we need this. That's that's right. And it takes on more than just the idea right. of a place to educate that's children. That's right. That's and board right. members oftentimes miss that. I think sometimes the superintendent may miss that because we look at it, we look at the district from a monetary standpoint a lot of times, more so from an educational standpoint. So, um, I know I'm here today, but you guys go on the CCSD website. Yes. And you see all of the board members' emails. Yes. You flood them with emails. <laughs> I mean, you get to the point that, because my phone, you know, I, I get them on my phone. So I'm thinking, will you stop? Just stop! <laughs> <laughs> but that makes us pay attention. Yes. Because board members look at it like this. If we don't see you on Monday at 75 Calgary Street, and we don't get your emails and your texts, we assume you don't care. If we assume you don't care, we make the decisions for you. Don't let us do that. Don't let us do that. You guys make us make the decision you want us to make. Give us the decisions that you want, and then let us figure out the numbers of how we make it work. But as a voice, you guys come out with one voice and say, look, this is what we want. And tell us in the email, look, we live an hour from 75 Calhoun Street. We can't make the meetings, but you're going to hear what we have to say, and you're going to do what's in the best interest of the children on this far side of the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ms. Uh, Miller, in our Ms. Joas side, new community friend back there. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Grant had. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, this is for uh, Ms. Miller. Um, what, what, your opinion on uh, a math and science out here? Again, it's not my decision. Okay. Th this is not for me to decide. But, but do you think that it's possible that the board would just I, some input? I'll tell you this, and this has been my suggestion. As a community, in my opinion, you guys give us two to three options. Any of those three options, you guys love. Mm -hmm. So no matter which one we pick, it's one you guys love. Yeah. Don't give us one option and one option only, because if they said, no, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. For example, if you guys were to say you want an IV program, and the board says, you know what, I don't think an IV program should go out there. We've got nothing else to work with. We're going to give it what we want. That's why it's so important that you decide what's in the best interest of the students, not us. All I have to do, you guys are my constituents. 
I'm supposed to vote the way you want me to vote, not the way I think. I don't live on Walmart. My daughter doesn't go to the school. But if you tell me, Mr. Miller, we want this program, and you better vote for it, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to vote for it. <laughs> but you got to give me something to work with. Don't give me just one option. Give me some multiple options that all you, every one of you can understand why you want that option, why it's a viable option, and it's something the board should consider when it comes down to voting. On the survey, first choice, second choice, third choice, write in, and we're writing, maybe the same as somebody else is writing. So write it in. Um, I don't have any children here or grandchildren. My, my two boys went to school here, and I went to school here. But my thing is.